What's going on guys? Um, this is another video in that series of videos I was talking about making. Um, this was going to be on getting a good tone. What that involves, how you get there. Um, the last video I talked about, uh, just setting up your guitar, getting it ready to play. How are you going to get longevity out of your strings? Um, how are you going to get uh, that uh, tuning that's going to stick? Um, how are you going to get that playability that you can go back to time and time again and play in any genre and uh, get a consistent playability and um, your guitar is just going to last longer. Well this video is going to be about the tone. How do you get a good tone out of a little? Okay. Right now I'm playing out of a Crate 212, um, GT212. Uh, the GT series is a little bit older. Um, this was one of my first amps and it's a workhorse. It's been soaking wet. It's fallen off a truck twice. It's been just got the crap beat out of it and it's seven years old to boot and been played on 10 for hours at a time and the amp is still kicking. Sounds awesome. And the worst that it's got is a little bit of ripped Tolex. Um, it's got three channels, uh, clean rhythm and solo with a three band EQ. Um, so that's the amp I'm playing out of. My guitar is the LTD, ESP LTD uh, Viper 400. And since we're just talking about electronics today and just ha the, how you're going to, not necessarily just electronics, but how you're going to get that tone, we're going to really think what makes a good tone, what makes a good sound, whether it be for recording or just sitting in your room like I do and jamming out, or sometimes playing at church, playing in small gigs in a band, whatever. Um, Here's how I go about getting a good tone. Well, first of all, uh, we're gonna get out of one mindset immediately. There's no, um, oh, I need to get blackouts, or I need to get active EMGs. There's no one thing that's gonna make your tone just change and be awesome, okay? I can play this guitar, which I think is the best guitar in the world, in some pretty crappy amps, and it ain't gonna make them sound any better. You guys need to get out of this mindset, first of all, of, that I want a better sound so I need to go buy this one thing and it changes everything. Your sound and what you like is a combination of about 20 things, but here are the basics. Um, first of all, let's start with the guitar, okay? The wood. The wood is gonna affect the sound a lot, okay? Bass wood versus mahogany like this guitar is. This is pretty much a solid chunk of mahogany. This guitar has a lot of bite. It's very, um, it's got a uh, less low end, um, it's very focused, and it's got good attack. This is great. Mahogany is great for that, okay? I used to have the M200. It was made of, I uh, believe, Agathis, which is similar to Basswood. I don't quote me on that, but um, the guitar was muddy. I could have the same exact pickup in that guitar. I did, an 81, Active 81 had that, that pickup, same settings and same amp and everything, I could unplug one and plug it into the other and they sounded night and day differently. So that is the first thing. The, what your guitar is made of is going to change your sound a lot. Your electronics, okay. Uh, there's such thing as good and bad electronics, but some people play, in my opinion, crappy electronics. But the combination of how they tune their guitar, how they play their guitar, their settings on their guitar, their settings on their amp, what kind of amp they play, what kind of amp it is, uh, solid state or tube, all these things play into that factor and that's the sound that comes out, okay? So your pickups are a huge part, right? Um, then we go to, say, your cables. If you're using a cable that's about as big as an angel hair piece of pasta, your sound you know, it's the, it's the slurpy theory, right? You take a tiny straw, like the little coffee stir straw, see how long it takes you to get to the bottom of a slurpy. Then you take the big gulp ones that are like a freaking elephant catheter. Those are gonna do a lot more. It's the same theory. The kind of a bigger gauged, high quality cables are gonna give you a better sound. It's gonna have less of that fuzzy sound even when your volume knob is off. Um, sometimes you have that almost, it sounds like a little moped inside your amp. Um, so, uh, and also a good jack. Make sure your jack is in good shape. Um, then we go to your amp, okay? You, you can have a solid state amp and it not suck. Mine sounds awesome and I play a solid state amp. Um, tube is not the answer. So we go to this. 
I play what's called a scooped setting, okay? Scooped, for those of you who aren't familiar, is where your lows and highs are on like a six, and your mid is anything lower than that, okay? And it's basically low to high, under the mid, right? Scooped. Um, that's a very popular setting, that's why they gave it a name. Um, I use that. Uh, but right now my um, settings are, uh, my lows are usually a little bit lower. Um, just because this amp has great low end, so I don't need to try to compensate for that. I can turn it down a little bit. Um, my mids I don't concentrate on too much. I, I like them there because it gives uh, meat, you know, it kind of um, gives a, not so much a backbone, but maybe a little bit of muscle. Um, and my highs is what I really like to have emphasis on because this is an electric guitar. You don't want to compensate for the lack of having a bass. The bass in the band is what gives guitar beef, okay? It's not the low end on your guitar, believe it or not. Um, and you know, then gain for me is always all the way up. Shape or presence um, basically is uh, kind of if you do this with your mouth. I know this is ridiculous, but that's kind of what shape and presence does is it opens that kind of sound, makes it sound right there or kind of held back. Um, so uh, my shape is really in between. So that all these things play a part in your sound, okay? The next step is figuring out what's my sound. Well, it's usually influenced by what kind of bands you like and listen to that you want their sound. And that's, nobody just says, I want to be different from everybody and goes for something opposite of what they listen to. They're, they want to sound like the guys they like, and that's, that's fine. That's what I do. Um, I love Kill Switch and Gage's distortion. Um, I love uh, August Burns Red's distortion. Um, I love Alter Bridge. Mark tremonti has got one of the best tones on the planet. Um, so that's how you do it. You try to model who you like. Okay. So basically what you want to do is not go out and spend $10,000 on a whole guitar rig. Um, what you want to do is, for me, I want a high gain, wet sounding distortion that I can get those, you know, um, the uh, pinch harmonics. Something that's really uh, ha can sustain those wet pinch harmonics <laughs> that's got nice, quick, high gain. Um, and for me, that combination that helps me achieve that sound is an active EMG 81 pickup, um, my strings being a little bit looser, and this GT212, which is a high gain, solid state amp that's very flexible and versatile that I can get two different sounds out of it, and not just that. Um, and all that takes for you, how you figure out how to get that sound, is I can help with that a little, but it also takes you going out and playing. Um, I can tell you, well, this kind of pickup is a little more high gain, this one's not, this amp is going to give you kind of this sound, all that kind of stuff. So, um, so you have to do your research. That's pretty much the meat of it is research. Um, now, uh, I'll go into, this. Is, that's pretty much all I can tell you as far as trying to figure out your sound. Try out amps. Go on the internet, listen to YouTube videos of amps, mic'd and unmiked on stage and everything like that. Figure out all these different brand names of amps, find the best prices, go try them out if you can. Um, get some info on guitars, pickups, play, just you need to try a bunch of stuff and you'll come up with a combination that just is you. It's not that looks cool or that's popular, it's you. It's, it, it speaks directly to your ear and uh, it, it really touches your core and you tell you can tell that's your sound. Um, now this next part, which is kind of how I'm going to end it, I'm going to tell you how I get my sound um, and hopefully you'll be able to take something from that or at least it'll help you look at things from a different angle and maybe help you find a gem in this description that'll help you learn something new and find your sound.